So I have a fun video today for you guys. Uh, what this is going to be is comparing these five bulbs here. Uh, we have an incandescent, we have LED, and we have fluorescent. We have a couple other uh, LEDs here also. Um, this one is a filament style LED, and this one is just from another manufacturer. Uh, what we have here is uh, we just have a generic incandescent. We have one, uh, this first LED is uh, the Great Value, so that's the Walmart brand. We have the CFL here, which is a Max Life, and this other LED here is a Philips, and the one on the end here is a GE. Uh, what I have here is called a color spectrometer. What this device is, it accurately measures the color temperature of a light. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure each one of these lights and actually see how close they are to their actual specifications. All of these are at 2700K, so it'll be a really easy comparison. And then just as a reference, we have an incandescent bulb, which is what's typically considered uh, to be true warm white. Uh, all these bulbs are rated to be considered warm white. So let's start by turning off the light here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this tool. It does take a second to boot up. There we go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to screw in the incandescent bulb and turn it on. So there we go. I'm going to point the tool at the light. Quite a bit of heat coming off of this because it is an actual incandescent bulb. I'm going to click the reading button here. And we can see here that we're actually sitting at uh, 2618. So I'm going to write that down here. So 2618. Okay. And uh, this is a 75 watt bulb. And we can actually see here on the graph, we can actually see that it's a very smooth progression of what this light is putting out as far as its frequencies. At the very bottom here, we have uh, 380 nanometers. And here at the top, we have, uh, or all the way to the right rather, we have uh, 780. And we can also zoom in here and we can get a better view of what's going on. And let me uh, focus this for you. There you go, you should be able to see that clearly now. So that's what, what this light is outputting. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna give it a second to cool down because these uh, old fluorescents, or these old uh, incandescents get pretty hot. See if we can take it out of its holder here. All right, so that's taken out. The next one up is going to be our great value. Again, this is 2700. So our baseline for an actual incandescent bulb was uh, 2600. All right, and let me just make sure this is turned up all the way. There we go. And uh, we're gonna take a reading. There we go. So our next value here for the great value is 27, 23. And I'm gonna zoom this in so you guys can see Actually, I could turn this off, make it a little easier. There we go. So you can see the spike there. We've got a little bit, a little bit going on in the blue here. And but it it still is a fairly smooth progression. It's not as smooth as the um, as the incandescent ball, but it is um, it is a lot. Uh, it is a lot more away from the red, uh, the red part of the spectrum. It's it's a lot more of the the ambery orange part of the spectrum, which is what you want. You want to get away from the the infrared, which it was definitely going in the direction of the infrared. So let's go ahead and let's move on here. And this is definitely a lot easier to, to remove because LEDs don't get as hot. Next one up is going to be the max. Uh, Max light, and this again. This is a twenty-seven. 
There we go. So we'll let that heat up for a second. And I'm going to take a reading right now. So right now we're at uh, 2,500, almost 2,600. I'm going to give this a second to, to warm up because uh, CFLs, uh, compact fluorescent tubes, they, they actually, the, the, the mercury inside them actually needs to warm up before they actually get to um, the proper brightness and the proper temperature. So we were at 2564. Let's see what it jumped to. So there we go. So we, we actually got a little bit colder. So we're at 2621. Take one more reading here. I, I'm looking at the, um, the the filament, or not the filament, the um, the tube, and it, all the, the entire tube is actually glowing now. So um, it should be, yeah, it's it's pretty stable now. So let's um, let's actually, you know, let's write that down real quick. So 27 or 26, 26, 27. All right. So let's zoom in on that, and let's take a look here. So what we can see is that spectrally, the light um, is, is not very even, uh, and this is why fluorescent lights can be very harsh, because they're only outputting very narrow, specific uh, frequencies. So we can see here that there's a little bit at uh, you know 430 nanometers, huge uh, spike which is what we're getting the, the warm white from which is at about the the 600 uh, or 590 uh, nanometers and then again down here at about uh, 500 and um, 545 nanometers so we can we can see the the large spikes and this is why uh, these these type of lights can be actually uncomfortable to look at uh, all right, so let's zoom out of that. Let's move on to the next guy here. And these ones also get pretty warm too. So they're actually wasting a fair bit of energy just to heat. Unlike LEDs, they're, they're a lot more efficient. So moving on, this next one is by Philips. There we go. Turn that guy on. And let's take a reading. So we're at 2719. That's really close to... It's, it's rating, so 2719. There we go. And, uh, and if we go here, again, we can, let me focus. We can actually see that, uh, again, it's a, it's a nice, smooth, progressive curve. Uh, there's no uh, sharp edges to it, uh, which, again, makes it a lot more pleasant to look at. Also, when you fill in all these gaps and you don't have sharp peaks, the other benefit is that uh, more colors are able to be seen. Things, things look a lot more natural or full color. Um, this is what's called CRI. And what CRI is, Color Render Index, what that, what that means is, is that means that when you actually look at something, um, does it actually look natural, like as if it would in the the sunlight or is it something that looks unnatural does it look like something that um you, you know it looks fake or it looks plasticky you know like for example you could have fruit or something like that and you could have um maybe a fluorescent light or something that doesn't um give all the the, the spectrum of the light to it so that all the colors because colors are not just red, green, and blue. There are shades of red, green, and blue. Everything, everything is sh many infinite shades of everything, and you need this full spectrum in order to get all those different shades to, to get the proper rendering, if that makes sense. So we're going to go here to this filament style um, LED, which is kind of cool, uh, and let's take a reading on this. So very similar. This one, let's write this one down. This one is... 2533 K. Uh, definitely a lot lower on on the spectrum than um, than the um, the Phillips was. The Phillips was almost bang on to to that reading. And, and let's take a look at the, um, the spectrum here. So again, we can see a very smooth progression. Um, so this is going to render uh, 
a lot of objects in a room or the whatever space you're in it's going to make them look very natural uh this is what you want to see spectrally for for things to be lit up so they they look natural and healthy and real uh when you get into the fluorescence and you see all those peaks and spikes um it's removing you know those those different shades of colors to actually be seen correctly how they would in, in normal daylight and daylight would actually show very similar to this uh, just a very smooth progression kind of like the um, the incandescent bulb um, now as an added bonus what I'm going to do is I have another uh, fluorescent light or not fluorescent uh, incandescent light here and this one is really interesting because this was actually made uh, in the Henry Ford um, Museum. And this is a uh, replica of a Edison, original Edison style bulb. And this is really cool because uh, this, this light bulb has a single filament like this. And uh, typically what you would have is you would actually have the, the tungsten wire and it would be in a bunch of different little holders and it would be wrapped in a specific way. This is this is a lot more true to how uh, incandescent, bul incandescent bulbs were made when they originated. So I'm going to turn this up in brightness and I'm going to take a measurement. Now the brighter that incandescent bulbs get, uh, the, the, the colder that they're going to get and then the, the dimmer that they are, the warmer that they're going to get or the, the lower of the um, uh, Kelvin rating. So um, let's take a reading here and again we can see here that we're, we're definitely going very much into the infrared part of the spectrum but again it's a very a very progressive uh, or uh, smooth ramp going going into that there's no there's nothing missing there's there's no harsh uh, spikes or peaks or anything like that and I just thought this was a, a cool way to to conclude this little experiment because um, this is pretty much where um, artificial lighting other than fire and, and gas lanterns came from. This is this is the dawn of, of the electric age and uh, I think this is a cool way to show what how everything has come to going from incandescent to moving on to fluorescent to then uh, now we're, we're on to LED technology. So if this was if this video was uh, entertaining or useful uh, in any way, uh, give it a give it a like and uh, subscribe for more. We have a lot of other interesting things that uh, I like to to test and to play with here. Uh, concluding, we can actually look here and we'll look at this under the uh, the light of our old incandescent light bulb here. So. Um, Basically, the Philips LED was the closest um, to its actual rating of uh, 2719 with the close uh, runner-up as the, the great value. So LEDs are really the way to go. Uh, fl fluorescent uh, lights were a nice um, fill-in before we got the LED technology, but uh, as you can see from how the, the uh, spectrometer shows, uh, the LED actually does replicate um, what needs to to be rendered for for lighting so uh, i'm happy to see it fluorescents still have their place um in in the world but uh, i definitely think led technology is is the way to go um so anyway yeah these are these are our results here and uh we can see that uh, leds get um get pretty close uh and even though the the compact fluorescent it, it was a little bit off it was at 26 27 the, the big spikes that you saw those are the big problems when um, when you when you have uh, light that isn't outputting you know the full spectrum of whatever color it's trying to be so you know if it was going to be more blue it'd be you know a ramp up to the blue uh, on this side of the spectrum and the same thing if you have you know an amber or, or a tungsten uh, color you know it's going to be in the middle here and then if it's if, if it's something you know really warm like this guy is um, obviously, you know, it's going to have a, a bigger ramp towards, towards the red. So anyway, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, again, subscribe for more. We're going to output, uh, some more videos, um, as soon as I get a chance and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.